Okay, so I think my time is also quite <laughs> limited as well. So thank you everyone for the presentation. Uh, for thank you. So that's good. <laughs> I'll tell you a little bit more about Shopee. We'll talk about it later as well. I'm going to go through a, uh, a little bit about trust, about marketplaces, and a few myths as well on mobile. How many of you guys, okay, a few people put up their hands before when Edward was asking people about whether they sold online. So how many people sell online? Can I just shake your hands again? How many of you guys sell on mobile? Through WhatsApp, through Facebook, anything, mobile. Okay, so a few people do. So what's the main thing that happens when you talk to people on mobile? What's the main issue that you always find? Uh -huh. And do they usually visit you or what, what's the problem? So I think it's They'll ask about where is your company is and uh, is this company uh, virtual or uh, is there uh, physically? And uh, the price. Yeah. So when you do that, you're actually trying to build trust, right? Because they start talking to you. And that's, I guess, one of the main things that I want to start talking about. It's about how you build a lot of trust online. It's not just about listing your products up and then letting you go and sell. You need to do a lot of things before that. Oh, yes. I'm supposed to go to my background. So yes, I've been working in various startups all throughout. Uh, in Singapore, I work for a SaaS company called TradeGecko. Over here, I started with Shopee as well. I was one of the core people that started Shopee in Singapore um, last year, very, very early on. Um, and then they imported, exported me up here, back to Malaysia. Um, I was originally born in Malaysia, I was born in PJ. I moved to New Zealand when I was seven, and uh, worked in various startups, did a whole bunch of crazy things all through my life, and I'll go through all that later, so I won't bore you. Right now, Shopee is a deep premium mobile-centric C2C marketplace. And so we essentially are a business by Greener. We're really backed by a very big company all throughout Southeast Asia. We're present in seven countries, in the Philippines, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, Taiwan even. And so we officially launched over here in December only with over six, and, and so far we've already garnered over 600,000 installs. So we're gunning for the 1 million installs in the next two months or so. Uh, we're focused on partnering a lot with a lot of uh, small business enterprises here. Um, a lot of even grassroots entrepreneurs, the people who want to start a business from scratch. And this is one of the things where, uh, this is where Shopping can come in and actually help you. So the first thing I'm going to go through is a few uh, facts on mobile. I'm going to go through it all really quickly. If you want the numbers, you want the sources, let me know. I'll provide them to you as well. Connect me up on LinkedIn or find me on Facebook. I'll give you all the sources. But essentially, everyone's going to be skipping the laptop and desktop age. No one's really going to be in laptop and desktop so much anymore, aside from maybe some of the older crowd. Everyone is on mobile nowadays. Who over here owns a smartphone? Just raise your hands up. Yeah, come on. Okay, you guys all need to own a smartphone nowadays. Everyone, it's a tool for your business. If you don't have a smartphone, you're pretty much crippling yourself. So you need a smartphone nowadays to go and get more customers for your businesses. And so mobile in APAC itself is going to grow by about two billion. And this is in USD as well. So it's that big blue thing over there. <laughs> it is the biggest area of growth for mobile. And that's and that's mobile subscriptions right there. So we are the biggest market in Asia Pacific that will use mobile. USA, Europe, all that, they're all the smaller lines. Big blue one is where we are at, okay? In Malaysia itself, internet penetration is at 66% of our population. And so that's a whole big amount of people that could potentially be your customers. And so Malaysians primarily buy smartphones as well. No one really buys like the old Nokia brick phone anymore. Everyone's on smartphone. 
and Android dominates most of the market because Android phones tend to be the cheapest smartphone alternatives. Who over here owns an Android phone? More hands. iOS? They're rich people. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I own an Android phone myself and yeah, we, we do a whole lot of budget testing because we have like multiple phones all the time. And so yeah, Blackberry pretty much non-existent now and Windows is just going out the door. So we have tailored our Shopee app towards Android and iOS. And if you check out our new version, actually, there's a lot of new chat features, and I'll go through that later. And so, yeah, there's a very, very big market opportunity to put your business online and mobile and convert anyone on mobile, anyone online, to a buying customer. So the average number of hours spent on internet on mobile in Malaysia is one of the highest in Southeast Asia. 3.1 hours per day per user. That is a long time. If you work an eight-hour day, that's a good solid like third of it there. And so a third of it spent on mobile. So if you have employees and all that, they're probably spending one third of their time working on mobile phone. <laughs> and so yes, 79 percent of mobile owners use it for social media. So social is very, very powerful. And that's probably where you got your inquiry from Facebook about, you know, hey, tell me more about your business. Tell me more about your product. You build your trust there. So if you don't have a Facebook online page, or sorry, a Facebook page for yourself, get one right now for your business. 91% of Malaysians shop online, with total sales of over one, it's actually 1.2 billion. And so there's a lot of sales and there's a lot of opportunity being made online. But only 0.3% of online transactions are made on mobile, i.e. people only pay 0.3% out of all transactions on mobile phone. So one of the key reasons why is because people don't trust mobile yet. There's a lot of things like credit cards. How many of you feel safe putting in your credit card details on your mobile phone and buying and transacting? Not many do. And so this is the thing. This is a big barrier to entry for a lot of people, but it's something that Shopee is trying to overcome slowly through our marketplace. Because we see a lot of opportunity here. The moment you have things like Apple Pay coming in, I mean, there's iPay, there's all these other mobile platforms, mobile commerce platforms, uh, mobile financial platforms that allow you to transact safely online, that give you that guarantee, that give you that safety. And you are at the forefront. We are at the start of it all, where people are just gonna keep on buying and selling on mobile, not on desktop anymore. Because it, essentially, if you think about it, if I buy on something on mobile, and I've got, say, using my Visa card and all that, I still have the OTP, I still have like you know the password I have to input after it gets SMS to me, I have to verify it. It's completely safe, there's completely nothing wrong with actually transacting on mobile, it's just a mindset. So the next thing then, so essentially from that, we have a lot, um, we, we have a lot of data, we have all the opportunity for mobile, and this is why you should go mobile. Marketplaces, so briefly talking about marketplaces. What is a marketplace? How many of you guys own your own online marketplace? Good, you're not competing with me. Uh, how many of you guys sell to Malaysians online? A few people do. So there's a lot, so I'm trying to get you more and more into thinking about this, to set up your account on Shopee, mainly because now's the time to do it. Shopee's gonna be completely free for everyone, so yeah. <laughs> Um, a marketplace essentially is a platform for buy and sell to meet to buy and sell product service. Shopee allows you to do that. Financial transactions happen either on or off the platform. There's no real marketplace. Some marketplaces don't have the financial element into it, so people pay on the marketplace. And so if you think about, say, maybe like the old times where it's like Craigslist, for example, people just list an ad, oh, hey, contact me here on my mobile phone, meet, meet up with me, COD, whatever it is. That's one thing. But you can actually have financial transactions happening on the platform as well. When you think of marketplaces like say, Lazada, Living Street, Shopping. Marketplaces aggregate the products. So what we do is we get a lot of product, a lot of inventory from everyone else and put it in one place for anyone to go and shop. And selection is usually very wide, availability very high, price is very competitive and very, very vendor specific. More specific and people can find specific stuff more than if they had to go and retail shop. So discoverability is a big thing. And it's, it's basically like Pasa Malam, right? It's, it's Pasa, it's basically a market online where it's gonna be, if I wanna find some, say, pair of Nike shoes, a lot easier to find for me searching than going from one end of Mid Valley Mall to like the other end of Mid Valley Mall to shop. And so all sorts of e-commerce sites exist right now. This was taken from e-commerce Milo. Thank you, e-commerce Milo. Um, <laughs> and yeah, notice I took the big shopping thing there too. There's a lot of different types of specialty stores. The B2C type, international sites like Alibaba as well. 
uh, ticketing travel sites, deal sites, all sorts, C2C, B2C, ABCD, all the names and words. I can give you all the definitions for that later if you want. Um, I studied marketplaces. We always do a lot of theory, but theory doesn't mean anything until we put it into practice like what we did with Shopee. And so these are all the online marketplaces here. Shopee is meant to be a C2C marketplace, C2C being customer to customer. Anyone can buy, anyone can sell. There is no restriction and no barrier to your entry on our marketplace. And one of the things I want to actually talk a little bit more about was perfect competition. Perfect competition is an incredibly important aspect of any marketplace. All firms, when they sell an identical product, means anyone can go and search for the same product in the marketplace. There's complete transparency here. And it's a very, very key thing of any marketplace. The moment a marketplace goes and tries and hides something uh, and sells you unidentical products like you know, some fake stuff and all that, then it's bad. It's bad, for your, uh, it's bad for your marketplace, it's bad for your rent. One-of-a-kind items generally don't do as well because people always like to browse for items. All firms are price takers, so the meaning of that means the seller is always listing up an item at full price. The seller has to take the price. You cannot make on the price. You cannot just be like, oh, it's you know worth 20 ringgit, or actually no, it's 25. What you list is what you sell it at. The third point here, all firms have relatively small market share. This is a very important point. The moment you have any big dominant player in any marketplace, what's going to happen is no one's going to come in. No, no, no seller. If, if you've got like, you know, you're selling, I don't know, food somewhere, then there's a giant right next to you. No, you're not going to sell your store right next to a giant. There's no point. Because once you have a big dominant player in your marketplace, no, no seller's going to come in. No one's going to compete. Everyone goes to a different marketplace. Buyers have complete information about the products being sold and prices charged. Again, it's more on transparency. If they cannot see that you're having comparable products at a good price, no buyer will be on your marketplace. And freedom of entry and exit. So you are free to choose to buy from here, from say Shopee, from any other marketplaces online. So this is a key, these are key characteristics for key competition, uh, sorry, for perfect competition in our marketplace for Shopee. This is what we're gonna be adhering to because, oh, here we go. And this is what Shopee does, right? We sell identical products, we're a completely open platform. We do not stop you from listing our items as long as it's not illegal, please don't sell illegal things on our platform. Um, we also are allowing people to add all their prices because people can buy now instantly or people can actually chat on our platform. Unlike other online platforms, unlike other mobile platforms, you can't really chat so much. People can chat and people can negotiate on our platform. So whatever you do right now in a marketplace, normally when you transact with people face to face, you can actually do on Shopee. All firms have relatively small market share. So this means, and we keep it like this, we keep small entrepreneurs coming into our platform because we want them to reach out to their seller base, as like their buyer base. We don't have any of the big guys coming in and plowing through everyone. We have over 200,000 sellers, we have 20 categories, we're growing our categories as well. We want it to be as big as possible. This is because if we keep less and smaller and smaller sellers in there, we gain more traction with more sellers. The moment there's a big guy that comes in, yeah, no one's gonna to wanna to come in anymore. We keep it very even. It's complete information about the products. Search category fee ratings reviews. You have complete transparency to see how well a seller is doing. If you set up your store, you don't service your customers, you're not only going to you know, be further down the line than everyone else, but me as a buyer, when I see you, I'm not gonna buy from you. How can I trust you when your ratings are like 0.1 out of five? So there's complete transparency on your seller account, complete transparency on the items as well, because you shouldn't be listing out items that are, say, different from what they actually are. If I say <laughs> I've listed out some blue shoes, I better not be selling you some black shoes. And so we make sure that everyone keeps to um, the items that they sell. Freedom of entry and exit. So yeah, any seller can come in, any buyer can come in, any buyer can exit, any seller can exit. We are a completely open and free platform. We have no restrictions at all for anyone to come and enter into the marketplace. And this is how we're gonna achieve perfect competition. This is how we're gonna get the small entrepreneurs to even sometimes win against the bigger guys. So yeah, key benefits and features, I have to say this. <laughs> 
completely free to list stuff all the time, free to buy, chat options, negotiate, 20 characters for going. These are all our big features that we want to propose to any small time entrepreneur that wants to grow their business larger with us. This is the key thing, right? We are targeting grassroots entrepreneurs. We are targeting the big guys to come in and sell a lot. We don't just want orders, orders, orders. We don't just want like, you know, a lot of money coming into our platform, flowing up to our platform. We want the small time entrepreneurs, the grassroots, the ones who have the ideas, the ones who are willing to try, come on our platform, talk to people, start chatting with them, start interacting, use our marketplace as a real perfect marketplace and grow your business there. So some myths that people have and that I've encountered so far, mobile is recent, so millennials will be the only ones shopping on it. Only the young kids, like, you know, it, it, who has kids here? Yeah, like, these kids are the ones that grow up in the smartphone generation, right? Only these guys will shop on Shopee on, on mobile. These will be the guys who transact maybe 10, 20 years later. That's wrong. More people are having more, more phones. The 40 plus year old, Generation Y, even my generation as well, between Generation Y and Generation Z, um, shop more online. And this is the generation with the biggest buying power. The, the age segment that has grown the most of smartphone ownership has been in the 40 plus segment. So I would say if you think that you, as an older person, doesn't shop online, that's not true. You actually have the ability to do that. It's now more about trusting a marketplace. Mobile is unproven. So a lot of the times people come talk to me and say, oh, people prefer to shop on desktop, people prefer on laptop, blah, blah. It's the same exact thing. <laughs> it's the same exact thing to shop on mobile. In fact, people actually spend more time on mobile as was shown previously. People spend 3.1 hours per day on your mobile phone. This time can be dedicated to you, uh, sorry, dedicated to people searching for your store on shopping. Mobile shopping in Malaysia actually rose from 25.4% out of all online transactions to 45.6% in 2014. This is a MasterCard survey done. Again, if you want sources, let me know. Um, I'll send it all to you. So that's in 2014. 2015 has increased, 2016 I'm sure will increase even more. More and more people are coming to mobile. Gone is the laptop and desktop generation, everyone's gonna go on the mobile generation. And people say mobile's not safe. Don't trust paying anyone online. Don't trust putting your credit card details on your phone, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry. Most mobile platforms nowadays, in fact, if you see competitors that are out there, they all provide security. We have the Shopee guarantee. Essentially, if you follow the one, two, three steps, buy or pay to Shopee, Shopee keeps it first to hold to make sure that the seller dispatches the item. Either arrange to make meet up, like COD, anything like that. As long as the buyer receives the item, they hit receive, then, once the buyer confirms, the payment then goes to the seller. So we act as the intermediary to guarantee payment to the seller and also guarantee safety to the buyer to make sure no one double crosses each other, there's no shady stuff and all that. So we want to facilitate a completely perfect marketplace where people are completely free and open to transact. And there's no cost to anyone whatsoever. Alibaba and Amazon have both gone retail. I don't know if you've read recent news articles about Amazon opening up a like, big, big um, retail store in the USA, they have. They're opening up retail stores. Alibaba opened up a 20,000 square foot, uh, sorry, square meter facility in Tianjin. And what, why? It's because they A, first of all, want to build trust, and B, they want to highlight a lot of overseas products in a physical location. People will go there, they'll see it, but they'll buy it online. They're never gonna buy it on the spot. They will see it just to physically, you know, it's more of like a verification. I want to touch, I want to see the quality of the item, but I'll buy it online and I'll repeat the buy online as well. And this is the stickiness, the value of a marketplace online. At any point in time, and on mobile, just buy. Money is the only motivator. So, people always say, oh yeah, Shopee is free, but people need to sell cheap stuff, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. It's not always true that money is the only motivator to people buying online. This is why we have ratings. On Alibaba, we have ratings. On Shopee, we have ratings. It's trust. The trust is the very, very key component in any marketplace because if there's no trust, people will not buy from you. We have a chat response rate percentage on Shopee, right? We found that actually for items that are priced a little bit higher than the normal retail or the what competitors can give, comparatively, the people who have chats, chat response rates above 50%, they get more sales. They have 33% more sales than everyone else. People who have chat response rates above 90%, have a 240% increase in sales. Doesn't matter about your price. 
it doesn't matter about anything, like, it doesn't matter if you're the cheapest or not, people are not going to trust you if you do not respond to them. If I chat to you and you don't respond to me, even if I'm, you know, even if you're the cheapest guy, I'm never going to buy from you. Why? Because you didn't respond to me. Why would I buy from you? I don't even know if you're alive, right? So that's the key thing about building trust and building an important relationship online on any marketplace, any new store. Again, more key features. So again, we have no charges at all to enter the marketplace. One of the key things I want to highlight is just the fact that after you do this, you should really go and download Shopee. <laughs> Try it out. If you've got issues, talk to me outside. Uh, it's very easy to set up your account completely free. Just need your mobile phone number. We've got the guarantee to ensure the marketplace is fluid. No commissions at all charged, and we will not be charging at all. And I know there'll be a question later on coming in asking me, how do you make money and all that? I'll answer that later. <laughs> Chat and social, very, very important. We have integrated delivery options as well. So we're slowly building more and more integrated delivery options into our platform. Again, it's a part of our entire platform to make sure that the buyers can always receive the items as fluidly as possible from the seller. If I cannot facilitate that, then I fail as a marketplace. I cannot get my goods to the end user. So we're going to integrate a lot more delivery options. And yes, you can actually maintain your own branding as well. We're a marketplace that wants you guys, the smaller businesses, to always bring your brand onto Shopee. It's not about you signing on to my brand, Shopee, and me doing all the marketing for you. No, it's about you guys getting your business thriving on Shopee, or building and bringing your brand. We want to be proud of the brands that are on with us, not to overshadow your brand. So this is the key thing that we want to make sure we facilitate. I have 10 minutes left, <laughs> but plenty of time because I'm pretty much done. So as a startup, um, and you know, being only less than a year in operation, we don't make any money. We don't intend to make any money really within the next, say, two to three years. Because right now it's about getting market traction, right? It's about making those losses count, getting as many users on board on our platform. If we start charging people, A, that's going to be a barrier to entry on my platform, and B, well, you guys just won't come on board. <laughs> um, it's going to be, we, we want an open marketplace. Later on, we may charge extra fees. And it's going to be things like uh, if you want to get your store above and over, uh, uh, sorry, have an edge above over others. So there will be a boost button. There will be extra added features that you can subscribe to or that you can pay for to then have an edge over everyone else. But for the meantime, all the base features always completely be free. Even later on as well, right? The base features should always be kept free to facilitate entry into the marketplace. It's if you want an edge over everyone else within the marketplace in itself. That's what maybe you'll pay microtransactions, small things for, very, very small things to boost your items up, to be part of campaigns, to be part of our deals of the day, various things like that, to market your products within the marketplace better. Spot for right now is just huge user acquisition. That's our main plan. We don't spend a lot of money. We don't, we're very lean. If you go on Google or anything like that, or you never see us doing much SEO and all that, could be a bad thing, but again, we're leveraging social, we're leveraging trust. We're leveraging a lot of social media networks on Facebook, on WhatsApp, WeChat, everything else, everything like that because you can share. You can share your listings to your customers that way. We are leveraging social more because social is so much more powerful than building trust. Google SEO, I will Google for like Nike shoes, but that doesn't mean I trust the person. But if I get a recommendation from a friend, hey, visit me, you know, my friend's shopping store, then I know I can trust my friend. Why would my friend lead me to a crappy shopping store or something? You know, then you're not my friend. <laughs> And so we don't need to spend so much money on a lot of that. We're spending more smarter money, smarter ways of spending money on social instead. Yeah. Free. Download the app first. <laughs> All you need to do is download the app. After you download the app, register with your mobile phone number. Once you do that, actually, let me get all your details because we have. Sorry, I'm gonna press this button. We want to give you a seller handbook, so we'll help you on board a little bit better to get your store online. Uh, we have a power seller program as well. This program is meant to re educate some of the bigger businesses who've got things like thousands and thousands of items and thousands of SKUs and listings. So let me know if you're one of those businesses. It's mainly to facilitate you to upload and put your stuff online. We also have an incubation program for the smaller sellers to grow into larger businesses. So the incubation program really is, oh, I'm starting up part-time. I'm importing some maybe Korean beauty products from overseas that I saw were really, really cool and I think would sell really well in Malaysia, but not validated yet. So I want to try. I want to incubate my idea. That's what incubation program is for. So talk to me about that later as well. Our incubation program will really, really help a lot of our small sellers. 
uh, especially if you're starting a whole new part time. But yeah, uh, seller handbook will be available for everyone. Very, very simple. It's just how you set up, how you list up items, etc., etc. All on mobile. Very, very simple. Yeah. Uh, why don't you Okay. So current user base is in Malaysia itself. Yeah, it's all no. So we're present in all South Southeast Asian countries. Um, for shopping Malaysia, it'll just be for Malaysia only. So our app is only tailored towards Malaysia, selling towards Malaysians. We haven't done anything cross border yet, so we haven't done anything international, mainly because we've just started. So give us maybe a few more years, and we'll start doing a lot of that, and then we will be nice Southeast Asia. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> for now we focus purely within the country only. Uh, what was your second part of the question again? Uh, how do you advertise your apps? Oh, our app or your yes. store in the app? Oh, uh, uh, your Shopee. Oh, our app itself? Yes. I mean, we do SEO for Shopee app as well, but mostly on Facebook. So we do a lot of Facebook, again, because we're social. We do a lot of Facebook ads. We advertise products as well, actually. So if there are products which are super good prices from any kind of seller, we will randomly go and highlight them and put them in like Facebook carousel ads. And so people then click, hey, this is really good, as long as it's a good picture as well. Picture price and um, uh, what's it called? As long as it's in the related carousel towards the target group, that's how we promote a lot of people. Click, download Shopee just to buy. People buy, that's the user acquisition right there. I mean, our CPI is generally very low, um, but I mean, it's, it's, we have a very, very good ratio right now. We keep it very lean. We'd rather be smarter with our money than just millions uh, just like spend here and here and here just to get our app up as much as possible. Any other question? One more. I think it's the last one, right? Last question. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have this function boost now yeah. on Shopee. What exactly is it? So boost now was a very, very early function that we wanted to put in many to try. And what happens is as you boost now, it gets boosted to the popular products. So if you tap on boost, as long as no one else has tapped it as well, it gets pushed to the top. You will have to compete against everyone else who's also pressed push, boost, 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 boost. And that's essentially what's happened. We're trying to try out a button, a feature, where you can actually push your product up to the popular page. If you visit our category pages, you'll always see a, select, a selection and assortment of products. You hit boost, it goes to the top. It may be for a very short period of time because other people will hit boost very quickly. Our user base is very large. And so we've got, at any point in time, like about 800k active users. Um, and so people do that a lot. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it, it gets competitive. We're refining that algorithm a little bit more though. Because what we're trying to do then is leverage more on hyperlocality to make sure that people in the right areas, like say for example, like if I sell in East Malaysia, right? That they only see the East Malaysia stuff rather than like if I boost it up, you're going to see West Malaysia stuff, well, my shipping's going to kill me anyway, and there's no point. So we're working on the algorithm. We're testing it. It's our first game. <laughs> Please forgive me. <laughs> uh, it'll have to be the last question, I think, right? No? Can we keep going? OK. <laughs> yeah. We do promote services. So we do have a category for tickets vouchers, and it's going to be called tickets vouchers and services now before we open up a new category and stuff. So we can promote services as well. Oh, one more from here. <laughs> um, so, uh, buyer need to make payment to Shopee and they, the seller to deliver the item, right? Okay, so the money will be with Shopee, correct? So in the meantime, example, I'm a buyer, but I'm very lazy to hit button receive or even feedback I don't want to give. So how long the Shopee will hold that money to make sure that the buyer receives the item and release that money to the seller? Forever, now we're kidding. <laughs> we don't hold the money all the time. So Shopee, if, for example, I set my delivery day, and sorry, delivery time to be like five days, right? If it gets to you in five days, and you hit order C, fantastic. The money gets re uh, released to me the very next day. And depending on your bank, um, it may take a few more days after that. So within maybe a week or so. If you don't hit order receive for whatever reason, maybe, I don't know, just forget, you'll be prompted to do so. But if you still forget, what will happen is, after the designated amount of time, we will also release the payment. And so the payment will always definitely be released back to the seller. There's no worry about that. We don't hold it for indeterminate amounts of time, like 30 days, 60 days, or whatever. It will always be released to you as soon as possible, as long as the buyer hasn't hit something like, oh, 
you know, uh, product is faulty, I want to request a refund and all that, it will be also released if there is no objection from the buyer. And the thing about our marketplace as well is like the moment the buyer buys, we confirm as well. Make sure, hey, are you sure you want to buy this? Because you can't just buy me, oh, I want to cancel my order. No, we don't allow the buyer to just cancel the order, just like that. So the sellers get that security that your buyers aren't going to pull out last minute and be like, oh, okay, no, bye. So we want to ensure, again, it's that fluidity in the marketplace between buyer and seller to make sure it's completely even. Otherwise, problems, right? <laughs> Does that answer your question? All right, I'm going to hand it back. <laughs> you can come talk to me after, I'll be answering.